Draft mode has become super popular in the last couple of years of Football Manager and in today's video we, I say we because I have Pumpster here with me today, we're going to go over some of the best players to draft in the game. Alright so I am joined by Pumpster FM here and he is a bona fide encyclopedia when it comes to draft players. He has a massive spreadsheet full of all the players, loads of calculations involved, all goes over my head. But anyway, welcome, Pumpster FM. And he's also, I forgot to mention there, he was the assistant manager to Curti, who's won three competitions, three draft competitions so far. So he knows his stuff. I think it's free. I think it's free. He's, he's won three. Nice. Anyway, welcome in, uh, buddy. How's it going? It's very good. Thank you very much. That was a very flattering intro. I, I really appreciate that. Anyway, you have prepared a list of 10 players for us to have a look at. So who would be your number one player to look at if you're doing a draft at the moment number one now that's a really interesting question for me if we're talking number one on the list i'm looking at pure value i'm very much a numbers guy and so i will go purely off value and for me andre onana and it seems silly a goalkeeper who's currently suspended i believe we won't go into that one but 11.25 million for a goalkeeper like onana the numbers back it as really the best value you're going to get in goalkeeper. It's going to save you so much money to spend elsewhere. Goalkeepers don't spend more than 30 million in my mind. He is absolutely fantastic value. So 11.25 million for a keeper. That's generally the value that I would look at. I generally see expensive keepers maybe don't make the biggest difference in drafts. So this guy is a decent keeper and he's, he's well-rounded in the goalkeeping attributes. He's only got 10 as a first touch. Everything else is 13 or above, apart from punching as a tendency. Pretty good physically. Mentally, he's decent. It's just, it's, the only reason he's probably not got a higher value is because, as you said, he's suspended in real life. Yeah, absolutely. That probably plays quite a big part into it. I don't actually know how the values are generated. I would love to, if anyone at Sports Interactive is listening. I would love to see behind the uh, behind the curtain. I think maybe the things that let him down is, is eccentricity, I believe, is a little bit higher, which I know some some managers, I've heard from Curtis specifically, don't like goalkeepers with very high um, eccentricity because obviously it leads to slightly more crazy stuff going on between the sticks although eccentricity is not a, just a negative stat eccentricity means you'll be able to make those slightly more ridiculous saves so when goalkeepers are flying across the box think Aaron Ramsdale against Leicester where he saved that free kick they're going to throw themselves across and make saves you don't think they'll be capable to do because they're that little bit more crazy and we'll try it I think he's I think he's a really really nice value pick and you said there about actually about more expensive goalkeepers for me the only exception to that really Edison this year is 37.5 million I believe as far as I know he doesn't actually make it into my list is maybe the one elite goalkeeper the really elite goalkeepers that i would stretch my budget for if you've got a little bit more money left at the end of your draft and you're looking for a keeper 37.5 probably isn't going to make too much of a difference to your overall squad but a goalkeeper like edison with his distribution is maybe one player to think about attributes to value this guy has to be the best keeper that's available if you're just looking at him as a player and his draft value is just ridiculous at 11.25 it's a bargain. Absolute bargain. And a nice way to kick off the list, I think. Very, very good way to kick off the list. And who is number two? So number two, actually, we're getting probably end a bit of a conversation here, actually, about the types of players you're going to look for when you're drafting. One of the things that I would say, you want to pick players that are going to fit a system. And if you want really attacking, aggressive wingbacks at Traf Hakimi, you're not going to do much better than for £25.5 million. The man is quick and actually really well-rounded outside of being just really physically dominant as well. Someone like Ash Hakimi, you can also play in midfield, which I think flexibility when you're looking for outfield players is absolutely key. If you've watched some of the big draft competitions, if you've watched the showdown specifically, name drop there, you will have seen when people are winning it, they're winning it with really flexible squads. Having someone like Hakimi that can play at right back and right midfield and right wing back is gold dust absolute gold dust so for me 25.5 million pounds the newly signed psg player is just top notch yeah i've used taking me before and as you say he's so versatile anywhere on the right hand side you could even use him as a right winger at a push comfortable on the right and on the left and he has got some decent player traits as well he gets forward whenever possible he knocks a ball past the opponent using his acceleration and pace and he runs with the ball often he's got 13 dribbling you know it's not the best but it's not the worst and everything else about him is really good. And how much did you say he cost again? Uh, £25.5 million, which is, if you're looking at that sort of range of player, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. There is actually one other name who's the same value, who's just probably just as good. As you say, this year with three at the back, you know, playing with wing backs, this guy could slot into a whole 
load of different types of systems. Oh, absolutely. That flexibility, if you are going to go from a more attacking system to a more defensive system or vice versa, the guy is perfect. He's absolutely, like I say, gold dust. Having a player that is so flexible, really, really can't recommend it highly enough. Absolutely. Very, very good choice. Player that I've used before. Let's find out who's number three. Yeah, so number three in my list, going a little bit further up the pitch now, is one is an England fan that, uh, you know, he had a great summer. Raheem Sterling, £30 million, playing for Manchester City. So if you've got your Premier Leagues in, you can know this guy right away. Raheem Sterling, he's had a bit of a price drop this year, actually, in terms of draft mode. And uh, for me, if you're looking for an elite player, maybe not quite the top 10, sort of 5, 10% of that position for someone that is really going to benefit from playing sort of, if you play those aggressive wingers, inverted wingers, for me, Sterling's fantastic. And I think he also can slightly play up front as well. So if you need someone that's quick to play off the front line as well in an emergency sort of situation, Raheem Sterling, absolutely brilliant in my mind. Absolutely. As you said, he's had a bit of a, a significant downgrade in price. Was it 30 million that he cost? I'm sure he was up mm. this, in the 60s last FM. And he's, I don't think he's had a downgrade in his attributes to really warrant that price drop. Physically, he's an absolute beast. 18 acceleration and 17 pace. Technically, you know, he's as you say, he's not going to be the best in the world, but he's got really good work rate and off the ball and anticipation. And he can play on the left and on the right. What type of systems do you think Sterling would be most effective in, in the draft modes? See, as you said there, actually, with something like having a player like Sterling that has the really good work rate and the good anticipation, you're looking at Gagan Press. Look, if you're playing those preset tactics, which I know is always very easy in draft, really good actually for draft to have those in place. If you're playing a really high pressing system, so a 4 2 3 1 Gagan Press or a 4 3 3, having someone like Sterling that can play out wide with the good work rate, with good, like I say, the good anticipation, is going to really help you to press and press efficiently as well. And so I think for me, Sterling, brilliant, brilliant wide player when it comes to those sorts of systems. All right, so let's find out who's the next one on the list at number four. So at number four, we're now dropping back down the pitch a little bit. And when I said about flirt versatility, this man is maybe the best on the list. Looking through, he is probably the best I'm going to give you on this list. Fabinho of Liverpool, £28.5 million. For me, having a player that is just as good in central midfield as he is in defensive midfield, centre-back and right-back, it just doesn't exist anywhere else in the game. Fabinho is absolutely brilliant. I've used him in a couple of drafts already. I know Curtis a really, really big fan of him. I know a few other people that are really, really big fans of Fabinho. And for good reason. The guy is, at, is a Rolls-Royce in midfield. If you've got those press-heavy systems and you want an anchor in there, Fabinho's brilliant. There's nothing not to like about Fabinho. Physically, nothing less than 14. Mentally, he's outstanding. He's got great aggression, anticipation, decisions, positioning, teamwork, and work rate all 16 or above. And even technically, 16 first touch, 16 tackling, which is something you would look for in the DM and defender positions. But he has a 15 passing as well, so he's, compl he's as you say, versatile guy. can play anywhere from midfield back and that right back position. So you said you've used him before in drafts. How did you specifically use Fabinho? So actually, in my first draft, I picked him. It was really interesting. So I did a draft really early into the FM22 cycle during the beta, which is always risky with drafts. And I went, Do you know what? I'll pick Fabinho because, like I say, the versatility is absolutely king. And I was like, oh, I'll play him in midfield. I'll play him in midfield. No issues. And I was like, no, actually, I'm going to play him at centre back. And I was like, this could be an issue. I was a little bit worried, obviously, with the way the, the game is shaping up was that obviously really dominant in the air. Players are going to probably have a little bit of fun with him there. But actually, the way he reads the game and the way that he um, he's so well-rounded, if you put him next to someone that's more physically dominant, you're not going to have an issue at centre-back. So that was in a back two, not your back three conventionally, potentially. I also played him as an anchor man in midfield, sort of the half-back role. Again, did not let me down at any point in that draft. I think, like I say, I think you can just use him in any role. I maybe wouldn't use him as a right back, because like I say, you've got other options available. And I think he's probably better suited to those more central positions where he can really be more sort of focused on winning the ball in there and re sort of recycling possession. But for me, anywhere centrally, central midfield, defensive midfield, cent uh, centre back, if I can get those in the right order, any of those, you can trust him, you can put him in, not worry about it. So number five on the list, let's hear it. Yeah, we're going back to Anfield actually for our um, for our next pick here. Trent Alexander Arnold, twenty five point five million pounds. The same as that Trafikimi. This is where we we'll probably can have a little bit of a discussion actually about picking for the style of play you're going to play. So if you're going to play a really cross heavy system, Trent Alexander Arnold is brilliant. If you think you're going to play on the front foot an awful lot, 
Trent Alexander-Arnold is perfect. He's absolutely spot on. He also has that little bit more versatility to play centrally than Hakimi does, whereas Trent maybe doesn't have quite the ability to play further forward up the pitch in the advanced areas. So for me, I think he's really, really nice at 25.5 million. If it was me, I'd be prioritizing my picks. Like the order of your picks in a draft are absolutely crucial. Knowing when you're going to pick your positions, knowing that obviously if you've got the back-to-back picks, if obviously you're playing that kind of draft, you want to know who am I picking? What partnerships am I picking here? Someone like Trent, if you were to pick Trent and Fabinho in back-to-back picks, you've solved a lot of your issues really quickly. And I think that, for me, makes a huge difference. Having those issues fixed quickly with really talented players, Trent, I believe, is absolutely brilliant. 100%. He's a really, really good pick. He might not be as physically dominant as Hakimi, but he makes up a bit more in the technical aspects of the game. He's got the 17 crossing. 16 first touch, 16 passing, and the 16 vision. If you're playing a style of football that involves passing, that, as you mentioned, gets the balls into the box, Trent Alexander-Arnold might be the guy you want to pick. And what I've noticed, he's another versatile player. His versatility is something that you look for heavily when you're looking at draft players. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Like you said in, in the last point about Fabinho, if you're playing these longer draft tournaments, so if you're playing something that is six, seven, eight, even more games than that, you want players that can play across different positions. Having players that play only one role, I really, really would only reserve for the likes of your centre-backs or your strikers. I really want players across the other places in the pitch that can play in different roles in my system. If you were to talk to anyone that's won one of these big draft competitions, they will absolutely tell you that having flexibility is going to win you tournaments. If you're only playing a short tournament, a couple of rounds, by all means, go for those more specialised players because you're going to want to obviously get your best level in as quickly as possible. But if you're playing those longer systems, flexibility becomes a really, really big part of the game. So Trent and Hakimi are down at the same value. So you would say the only difference in deciding which one to pick would be the tactical style and the way you want to play. Certain, absolutely. And actually, as you're saying there, something came to me. I think if you're going to play... And it's a really simple way, and it doesn't quite, it's not an exact equation. But if you're playing really heavy Gagan press pressing system, you probably want Hakimi. If you're playing a really heavy ball retention system, so we're talking ticky tacker here, maybe even vertical ticky tacker, if you're using the presets, you're going to want Trent Alexander Arnold. You're going to want someone that can play a little bit more when the ball, when the player's slowed down. Hold it up at his feet, look to play good passes into your forwards that are making good runs. He does that a little bit better than Hakimi. There's not an awful lot to separate them though, so if you end up with one instead of the other, do not be disappointed. This is a... I'm really, really enjoying this discussion. So let's find out who's the next person on the list. Okay, the next one here actually, maybe not quite as versatile as the others, although he has got a little bit of flexibility, is Federico Valverde. I think is the hidden gem of draft mode this year. You're going to see his name an awful lot in the draft competitions that you're playing in. 14.25 million. The Uruguay midfielder from from Madrid is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I've used him in all my drafts so far and I, I have not seen him set a foot wrong and I've played easy double digits games. Not seen an issue. Always averaging around a seven, if not higher. I I really like him. He's one of my favourites. So I'm not sure if that's come across quite there. I, I, I think we, we kind of get the picture. Absolutely. <laughs> this guy is super versatile in the spine of your team you can play a dm you can play midfield you can even play in the attacking midfielder position he, he can play anywhere in that spine of your team and you know he's got that he's got that work rate he's got the teamwork he can pass the ball physically he's really good he's he's super quick as well 16 in acceleration and 17 pace you know, he'll get around the pitch pretty quickly. Yes, another one that really, again, obviously, I know a lot of favourites of, of foot manager fans out there is your pressing systems, and that's changed this year. So you really need to focus on those players that are physically capable and capable of getting around the pitch quickly and also doing that quite consistently. I think his stamina's pretty good from memory. So having someone like him in midfield next to maybe a bit more of an accomplished ball player, that's a recipe for success in my mind if you're playing a two. There's nothing really about this midfielder to say not to get him. And what was his value? Less than 15 million? It's a no-brainer in my mind for me, for him. All right, so who is next? Who's the next one up? Well, the next one up is, uh, you know, Marvel superhero himself, Captain America, Christian Pulisic. And uh, for me, 15 million pounds again, coming in very cheap. A player that can play across that attacking midfield line. So left winger, central attacking midfielder and right winger and a few other positions as well. For me, 
I think he's brilliant. I think he offers you a lot of the same things Raheem Sterling does. He's not maybe quite at the same ability level, but for half the price, again, no brainer for me, Christian Pulisic. I think he's absolutely brilliant. Going forward, he's rapid quick, which I think is always an asset. Doesn't matter what level you're at. The speed Christian Pulisic has, if you have him from the bench, actually, is, is really what I'm going to go for here, is brilliant. Having that speed to go, maybe if, a, if your opposition are playing really high pressing a lot of the time, get those quick players for the bench. You can throw them in and let them go straight out of tiring defence. Christian Pulisic, brilliant for that. You've just literally nailed the point I was going to make. At 15 million, he's an absolute like steal of a price. But yes, he may not be the same calibre as player that Sterling is, but he's half the price. And as you say, if you get somebody with the acceleration of 17, agility of 17, pace of 15, throw them on at the end of games where the defenders are getting tired, and he can play... He's, he's a very versatile player. Even right wing back, he can, you can slot him in there. But on the left wing, natural there, behind the striker, he's accomplished there, and on the right, he's accomplished. Super versatile. Get him on in the second half of games, and he could... You could probably tear it up. Absolutely. Absolutely so. And I've had him in a couple of drafts, and he has. He comes on and makes a real, real difference to this team. Christian Pulisic, I, I expect to see him a lot again. If you're playing in these drafts where you've got a limited budget, obviously unlimited budget doesn't really apply in this situation. But if you're playing with a limited budget, you can't really go wrong with Christian Pulisic. All right, we're, we're getting through these guys. Hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you do enjoy it, please make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And go check out Pumpster on his channel too. The link to his channel will be in the description, so make sure you go over and check that out. So, who's next? So, next one here. We talked actually about Sterling having a fantastic summer at the Euros. This is another guy whose Euros were ended a little early, but his country did win the tournament. Leonardo Spinazzola from Italy. £28 million is maybe a little bit higher than you might think is good. But having a player like him, he is... I really like him. I haven't had a chance to use him yet, but from what I've heard from other people and seen from other people the guy's fantastic absolutely fantastic the injury hasn't really affected his attributes by looks of things so Leonardo Spinazzola I believe he can play both sides as well left back and right back is very useful very very useful yes we can see here he's natural on the left he can also play the right competently but I'm, I'm a bit surprised that he's actually more expensive than Hakimi and Trent Alexander-Arnold yeah, you are paying a little bit more for Spinazzola. I think there's obviously... This is where we have our discussion about how much the utility is really sort of vital. So last year, you were seeing the likes of James Milner being picked purely because he could play pretty much anywhere. And he was... I think I think he's 42 million this year. He was about the same price last year. Spinazzola, what you get in utility and the option to play him in lots of different positions. If you're saving money elsewhere... This is where I'm going to lean into a, a theory I've got myself, which I you know, may end up going more into elsewhere. I like to have something called a swing back. So it sounds a bit silly. I like the idea of a swing back. So it's a wing back that can play either side. And I'm happy to play that a little bit more because you've got a player that can offer you cov cover on both sides. So usually when I'm drafting, I'll pick two full backs on each side. So two right backs, two left backs. And then I'll pick a swing back, if that makes sense. I'll pick someone that can play both sides. To me, Spinazzola is the best swing back. <laughs> the role that I'm gonna I'm gonna call on myself. The best swing back in the game. His attributes are all really good. Like he's probably just as quick as well, he's faster than Trent Alexander Arnold for sure. 17 acceleration, 18 pace. He's got good dribbling and first touch. Crossing, again, not as good as Trent Alexander Arnold, but it is a 14. And I've just noticed he can actually unconvincingly play a centre back. So another guy you could have if needed, play that centre-back role, and he might be able to do it all right because he's got that height of 186 centimetres. Yes, yeah, he's very much one that if you if you got desperate in any role, he probably would step in for you and be all right. Yeah, I, remember, I definitely remember him at the uh, at the Euros. It was a shame what happened to him with his injuries. But as you say, his injury hasn't really affected his attributes, so he really does look like a nice a nice little pick. He's one that in the, uh, in the winter update, he will probably uh, have a little bit of a downgrade, so... If you're watching this in February or March, once the, the winter update's out, just maybe go and check before you pick him on Spinazzola. <laughs> Always do your research. Always do your research. And speaking of research, that's what we've done here. So who's next? Yeah, so number nine on the list. He's not actually a number nine himself. I should have, you know, I should have thought about the branding here. It's a Thiago Alcantara, but Thiago is what he goes by in game from Liverpool. When I spoke earlier about Valverde and having a technical player next to him for £28.5 million, Thiago... I think is absolutely spot on. 
He offers you brilliant, brilliant technical ability in the midfield. If you're playing a system where you want to keep the ball, and even if you don't necessarily want to keep the ball, if you've got players around him that can do a lot of the running, it's not like he's incapable of running himself. But having those players around him will help him. He's your quarterback. <laughs> Wrong sport, but he's the one that will spray those passes around. And I think he's £8.5 million. I really like him. 100%. You could really build your tactic around a player like Thiago. He dictates the tempo, plays one two. he comes and gets the ball from deep. And as you say, he's he's not incapable of running. He's got 15 work rate, so he, he gets about. The only downside, I would say, is maybe his physicals, 11 pace, 9 strength, 10 jumping reach. So he might get beat in the air. But if you're playing that tiki-taka possession type play, you've got the ball. You're going to make use of that 18 passing, 18 technique, 18 vision. He's going to get you some some lovely play in the middle of the park. Do you think he would be probably the guy that gets the hockey assist? Again, wrong sport. But he'll be the guy that starts off the plays rather than the, the flashy gets the assist, scores the goals. Absolutely. And I think the best comparison I can make is he's probably your budget Kevin De Bruyne. He's your one that's going to do the very similar things he does. He's going to put the ball to the areas where it can then be delivered. So out to your wingers for crosses, into your attack midfielders for balls into the striker. Thiago will pick apart defences, and especially when people are starting to drop their lines back when they have pressed for a long time, having Thiago to maybe even bring off the bench, absolutely brilliant option. We'll unlock defences for fun. I think he's brilliant at doing that. Technically, absolutely brilliant. Thiago's also another one of those players that matches your kind of criteria of being a versatile player. To play the DM, play in the centre mid, and play attacking midfielder. But we can see here that he's unconvincing on the left and unconvincing on the right. But he can slot into there if you need. If you've got a, an, a tactic that's using a wide playmaker, he could probably play that role very well for you. Absolutely, certainly. I think any role you play him in is probably going to have to be a playmaking role. Like you say about his attributes, you're probably not going to want to play him as a ball-winning midfielder anywhere. But you are going to want to play him, if you're playing a Regista, I think he's probably pretty much spot on for what you want, the level you end up playing against. He's brilliant to play deeper, but if you are going to play higher, and like you say, it's a brilliant shout with the wide playmakers. I think they were they were pretty strong for a while in FM 2020, uh, 2021. I've not had a chance to use them yet. I'm going to put that down on my, uh, my little list to try out the wide playmakers with Thiago. Hey, you could be onto something there. Thiago is a wide playmaker. If you have success from it, remember to credit me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Will do. I will make, I will make sure to refer to this moment. So we've covered nine players so far. We're doing ten. So who is the last player that we're covering? Yeah, we're going to bookend this with goalkeepers. So for me, in FM21, going backwards, there were only two goalkeepers worth taking. It was Gigi Donnarumma or it was Samir Handanovic. If you were playing a world pool, those two would set you straight. You would not have to worry about goalkeeper after that. Donnarumma's price has gone up this year to 31.5 million, I think about that sort of range. But the other one, Handanovic, his price has gone down to 22.5 and he has gotten no worse. For £22.5 million, pounds, you're getting an old head, which I think is really important for us to talk about, we haven't actually spoken about yet. Having the roles like leadership, you may not think of that important in a draft. They absolutely are. Having those players that are intelligent, have been in that situation before, composed, leadership is brilliant to have. You want to have those players in there to get you through those tougher moments, to lead your younger players in the squad. For Even though the age doesn't massively matter, in the game, what the attributes are set to are that younger players are probably going to have a little bit less in the leadership, unless they're a complete, like, a Captain America again-esque person who's just going to lead from the age of 18 years old. You're going to want older players in there purely for the mental attributes they're going to bring you. And Samir Handanovic, between the sticks, you can pick him and forget about the position. You're not going to have to worry about it. He's not going to make lots of mistakes. Samir Handanovic for £22.5 million. If someone's already taken Onana, Handanovic, £22.5 million. Get him in your teams. He's brilliant. I like the fact that we're ending how we started with goalkeepers. Come in full circle. So would you say Onana would be your first choice goalkeeper of Handanovic as your backup choice? Yeah, probably because I'm so numbers heavily based. I'd rather have that extra 11.25 uh, million, the difference between them, and with Onana being half the price. I'd rather have that extra bit of money to spend elsewhere. And so probably based on the price alone, but if you end up with one or the other... I'll be honest, I wouldn't, I, again, I wouldn't be upset. It's the same as the Hakimi-Alexander-Arnold debate. If you get one or the other, do not be upset. Your team's absolutely fine. Oh yeah, there's no reason to be upset by getting Handanovic. I mean, 20 
on the reflexes, 17 one-on-ones, 18 communication, 16 command of area. He's a very, very, very good goalkeeper. And one thing, especially with drafts, that might put people off signing this type of player in their normal saves, but age does not matter in drafts. Getting somebody with the 16 leadership, 17 teamwork, that'll really, really help out your team more than, you know, signing a 30... Signing a twenty-one-year-old that has doesn't have that. Yeah, that's really important to add. Actually, as a, as a big tip here again, pick the older players. Don't pick the wonder kids. <laughs> it's really important to say. I know it's really enticing to pick Eduardo Camavinga. Go with a slightly older midfielder. Go with someone who's already. What you're picking is the player where they are now. You're not picking them where they are in ten years' time. There is no progression or regression when it comes to draft. So if you pick a player who's 35, if you pick Luka Modric, he's not going to regress. So the player he is now is the player you will get for the entire tournament. You haven't got to worry. Unless you're playing in a database where you've done the draft and gone out, outside, then there is regression. Maybe think about that slightly. Unless someone's frozen the attributes. Don't, in normal draft mode, worry about regression. Your players aren't going to get any worse. If you pick Cristiano Ronaldo, he's not going to fall off a cliff. He's not going to change at all. He's going to be the player he is the whole tournament. So pick the older players because they're a little bit more fully developed. Leave, leave your wonder kids for your single player games, for your network games. Leave them for normal FM. 100% agree. You need the finished article in these draft games. You don't need to spend your time trying to develop a player. You need them here and now. As, as you say, not in 10 years' time. Yeah, pick the players as they are, not as you want them to be. It's, it's, it's probably the, the real tagline I'd put on what I was saying there. So that's a surprise tip that I didn't actually expect us to kind of get into. But those are 10 players that Tomster and I think are probably, we just not say budget picks, but definitely 10 players to try and get your hands on if you are doing a draft. So the total value of all the players that we've just looked at is 230 million. Yeah, it's an important, important to add as well. Sorry, just as a little addendum there. Two of them are goalkeepers. You don't need more than one good goalkeeper. Pick a, pick, just pick one. Pick one of them and then just pay absolutely nothing for your backup because you're not going to need him, but it's just nice to have. 100%. And as you say, look at the numbers. Pay attention to the players. There's bargains to be found out there. You just have to go and find them. Anyway, guys, that's today's video. Thank you very, very much, Pumpster, for coming on. Remember to go into the description Check out his content. He's, he's really good and he knows the stuff about drafts. Pumster will also be doing drafts on Twitch. So if you do happen to see him live, 100% go over, check him out, drop him a follow and give him some love. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one. And cheerio.